Hi booktube, it's Andrea and I'm here today with December 2017's wrap up. I did not read very much in December for some reason, maybe because um, I was finishing work and I was very busy obviously with Christmas and the holidays. I had to do a lot of running around, uh, pick up my brother from the train station because he came home and then of course Christmas is just manic. Um, having two birthdays either side of it as well because my dad's birthday is Christmas Eve and my brother's birthday is Boxing Day. I spent most of the time actually running around even though I was off work and I just didn't feel the reading so we'll just go through very quickly the five books that I did complete in in December. I'm hoping to, to do better this year. <laughs> I'm already doing quite well so I'm, I'm well you know. I'm finishing off some of the books I started last year so it hopefully won't take me too long. So the first book I finished in uh, December was Stephen King's Firestarter as part of the Stephen King readathon. Um, obviously reading The Dark Tower which was massive put me a little bit behind uh, in, uh, into the beginning of December. I had started this but I hadn't finished it but I had to go to the hospital and have a what they call a glucose intolerance test and um, when you do that you have to sit there for two hours uh, while the thing they give you goes through your bloodstream. So you, you, they take a blood test, they give you a very sugary drink to drink and you sit there for two hours and then they do another blood test. So I read the majority of that sitting there because it, oh, it was it's so boring. I've had two of them and they've both been ugh. Anyway, so Firestarter tells the story of a young girl named Charlie. She's the daughter of a man named Andy and his late wife whose name escapes me. And I'll just have a look to see if I can find it. Vicky. <laughs> um, when they were in college Vicky and Andy took part in an experiment um, where they were injected with some kind of substance and uh, which caused them to develop some sort of psychic phenomena. So for instance Andy could make people bend to his will to a point. Um, it wasn't very strong. His wife had another sort of talent and their daughter was born um, of the genes of both of them. So she is a pyrokinetic. Um, she can also do other things but pyrokinesis is her main thing. Uh, so she can start fires with her mind. The government want her because they think they can train her up as a weapon. Andy is trying to protect her. They've already murdered his wife Vicky. And this is the story of how they go about trying to escape from the government agents. Um, yeah, it's a great story. It's long. It's not his longest, but it is long. I I actually really enjoyed it. I just sat there and I got I got that and I read through it and I was like, oh and I carried on reading it. I really, really enjoyed this one. It was a good one to get towards the end of the year. It wasn't the very last one, there's one more. But yeah, I did enjoy Firestarter, so I'm reading a lot of Stephen King. It's great, I'm really enjoying it. The next book was sent to me by Head of Zeus Publishing and it was the third book in the Raven Master Trilogy by John Owen Theobald, which is The Kingdom of Fools. This follows the story of a girl named Anna whose mother commits suicide during the early part of the war, during the Blitz in London. Her father is reportedly dead, however he's not, but that's another story. And she goes to live with her uncle who is Raven Master at the Tower of London and she learns to take care of the, the Ravens. When her uncle dies, she can no longer look after the ravens because they bring in a new raven master. So she joins the um, the ATA, the Air Transport Auxiliary. This was a team of women that was used during the war to fly planes from location to location. So you may have pilots in one area, but they needed a plane. So women would fly them from, say, one end of the country, from, say, Scotland to the Midlands or even further. However, the women were not allowed to use navigational instruments. They were not trained. They had to fly by sight. So they used landmarks, so churches, spires, factories, bridges, rivers as their navigational instruments. It was very, very dangerous. And in fact, um, Amy Johnson was a part of the ATA and she actually died on the Thames. She crashed into the Thames. Uh, so 
these women aren't given enough recognition. They are starting to get that recognition now. What they did was highly dangerous. So this tells the story of Anna, who is a member of the ATA, and she learns about a new um, rocket that the Germans have that could potentially wipe out most of Britain, the UK. And nobody believes her that this is going to happen. They're more focused on the D-Day landings and all that stuff. So she commandeers a flight as you know, a load of people and a load of planes and they decide to, using their um, non-navigational, but their, uh, their landmarks, to fly over to France to try and destroy these rockets. It was a great ending to the trilogy, brilliant book. I love the whole series. It is absolutely fantastic. And a nice little bit thing on the back is that my book blog, Book Books Books, is actually blurbed. I don't know if it'll focus on the back of the book. So I was very excited when I didn't know that they were going to do that. And it was only when I opened it up, I got really excited too. And I saw it, I was like, oh my God, I've got a blurb. It's my first blurb. I'm very happy. Book three was The Princess Diarist by Carrie Fisher. Uh, as we all know, Carrie Fisher died in 2017 at the, the well, yeah, 2016, the very end of 2016, so it's like the 28th or 27th of um, December. Um, and this book was published not long before that, and it tells uh, the story of her thoughts during the filming of Star Wars and the affair she had with Harrison Ford. Now, a lot of people are disappointed that there wasn't more about the filming in there, and yes, I do agree, it would have been more interesting if she told us more about the filming. However, what I found fascinating about this book was the beginning and the end of it. You had the bit about her, how she felt about Harrison Ford and what she was thinking in the middle, but at the beginning and the end of it, you, you had about how she belonged to everybody and how she was everybody's Princess Leia and, and so on. And the fame that they all encountered that none of them were expecting because it was a low budget film and it wasn't you know it was supposed to be a fun film but not seriously and of course it exploded and became this most amazing classic um there's a story of a young girl meeting her at a convention and being upset because she'd grown older um because of course we all do but leia at that point hadn't grown older now of course with the the two star wars films we've recently had out um the Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, we see Carrie Fisher's character of Leia Organa as an older woman, and which I think is fantastic because it shows that you can still you can grow older, you can still be elegant, you can still be beautiful, um, but nobody remains young, and that's why I thought it was great that you know a young girl could watch those films now and see how she has aged, but can still see how strong she has, how strong she is. Um, so yeah, I did enjoy it. Like I said, I would have liked a bit more about the fi actual filming aspect, but it was a very enjoyable read. Then I reread Ben Aranovich's uh, Rose of London. If you watched my haul, you would have seen me talk about this book about Peter Grant, who was a constable in the Met Police. He takes a witness statement uh, from a ghost <laughs> with regards to the murder of somebody else um, and discovers an underground world of magic and mystery, ghosts, goblins, um, the daughters and sons of the rivers. Uh, we have the characters are your mamma and papa Thames, and then the, the tributaries like Tyburn and Fleet and, and so on are all in here and they're all characters and they're all real. Um, it's really good. I haven't really read much more of the series. I think I've read the second one and that's it. But I do plan on picking up uh, the rest of the series at some point and reading them all. Because I did enjoy it. I thought it was a very, very interesting concept. And the last book to finish off the year was, of course, the very final Stephen King book for the Stephen Kingathon, hosted by Misty over at Binge Reader. Christine. Not a thin book, as you can tell. Let's have a look. Rivers of London, which was, if we take out the bit that is from the second book, the excerpt. I'm having problems with my pages. 391 pages. Christine. If I can get there. 749 pages, so a lot of pages. 
Christine, if you don't know it, where have you been living for the last God knows how many years, tells the story of a 1958 Plymouth Fury car named Christine and her new owner, uh, Arnie Cunningham. He finds her um, for sale, uh, for, for cheap. She's a wreck and he buys it buys her now her his best friend whose name has escaped me yet he's the person telling the story dennis um doesn't like the car from the start he thinks there's something odd about it and it turns out that the car is haunted or possessed by her previous owner um, the car has a history of sudden and mysterious deaths surrounding it uh, and the car just drives itself but in reality it's being driven by the ghost of its previous owner um, and it tells how anybody that crosses Christine by upsetting Arnie or by hurting Christine by beating up the car or says anything nasty dies a extremely messy, horrible auto death. <laughs> it, 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 some of it is very gruesome. Um, it is a classic. I can remember watching the film years and years and years ago, but obviously the book, it, it's very long. Um, could it have been shorter? Possibly, but it may well have lost something if it was a lot shorter. I really enjoyed it. It was a nice way to uh, round out the year. Um, Christine, sometimes ownership can become possession. But they should say under that, but who is the possessed? Because it's not the car. Well, it is. The car's possessed, but it also possesses the, the car owner. So it's... Oh... Uh, it is a classic. It is a classic King. If you want to read a Stephen King and you're up for a challenge because it is a big book, definitely, definitely read it. So those were the only five books I read in December. I did start some other books. Um, I just haven't finished them. I never started Birdsong, which I pulled from the TBR jar. Therefore, we will not be pulling from the TBR jar this month because I'm going to try and read Birdsong. And then, obviously, I will then pull it out. So, if you've read any of these books, let me know what you think. Did you agree with what I, th I said about, say, the, the Princess Diarist or, or the, or the um, Rivers of London? Um, see if you think anything else. Um, any books that are similar to these, if I've said I've really enjoyed them, what are they? Leave me some names of authors or book titles and so I can go and look them up. Not going to guarantee I'm going to buy them straight away, but I may see if I can get them from the library. Because um, library books are still free and libraries rule. So that's it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, quick wrap up. Um, I will see you again fairly shortly with some other kind of random video. Who knows what it's going to be. It could be colouring, it could be photography, it could be books. It could be Marilyn. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to be doing next because who knows. Anyway, <clears throat> if, if you've enjoyed this, don't forget to leave me a comment, like, share and of course subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. I do appreciate everything. And hello to everybody who has subscribed recently over the last uh, month or so. Um, you will all know that it will be going quiet in February. I will have some pre-recorded films with videos to go up. Um, they will be mostly things like uh, colouring book flip throughs and uh, scrapbook tours. Uh, just so that there's something out for you to see. I don't want you to forget me. I am still around, but it's going to be a hectic month, um, February and probably the beginning of March. But I will try and get at least a wrap up out on my reading. So you know what I'm up to. I will see you all soon. Have a lovely day. Happy reading, guys. Bye.